so welcome everyone. This is, uh, I don't, I mean, I've been doing this for a while. I've been coming back because I'm Paul of Kicks Clothing. Um, I've been coming back probably for like 10, 12 years, kind of working with CC of the Career Center and bringing back artists talking about different opportunities in the art field. So basically we could just get started. We'll go down the line and you can just introduce yourself and where you went to school and your degree and what you're doing now. Okay, so I'm Cassie McNeil. I'm from Small Shadows Photography. A lot of you see me around all the time. I can be found photographing probably tomorrow. I'll be at the cross game tonight. Um, I went to school for, I went to four different colleges, transferred a lot, um, and I had four different majors. I got my degree in elementary education uh, with a focus in social studies, and I don't use my degree when I do photography. Nice. <laughs> I'm Olivia Luciani. I'm the owner of Laced by Live. I customize sneakers for people all over the world. Um, I went to high school at ESM. I played basketball in college at Buff State. And that's when I decided to make my business my business because I played basketball. Couldn't have like a traditional job while I'm working and balancing school. Started cleaning shoes for people and it turned into a customizing business. So. I also don't use my degree, but I did get a four-year degree in communications. I switched my major like five times in college, and I have a minor in coaching, but I have my own business now, so. Did you take a lot of art classes in high school? Or yeah. Any, or any in college, or are you just a natural? I'm self-taught, but I did take art classes in high school, not in college. Um, but now with like, we didn't have YouTube like it is now, so I had to like learn from tri trials and errors on how to do it, but yeah, I'm all self-taught. Uh, my name is Paul Shenick. Um I went here to, at Western to see a long time ago, and then I went to uh, RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology, for, um, I started off in graphic design, and then I switched to industrial design, which are pretty similar. Um, you're still doing graphic works, but industrially you're doing more model making and product making. Um, I graduated RIT in 2008, and now I design uh, and print shirts and t-shirts and sweatshirts, that type of thing, and yeah, for Kicks Clothing, so. Can you, before we um, go on, where did your business begin? Before you went to college? In, in the classic basement of you know my family home and you know started so this there was before and before you went to college didn't you start yeah no after it was after so in 2009 2010 i still had some i'm the oldest of six so my bro a couple younger brothers who were in middle school at the time and i just matt, matt was there oh yeah <laughs> so uh and i started making stuff for my brother and his friends and just got in this school and then just the internet was starting to pop with Facebook and Twitter, so just kind of used that to my advantage. Um, and now just the way social media is with Instagram, Snapchat, uh, Snapchat TikTok, all this stuff, um, YouTube, it's just gone just like her, like I do business with people all over. Hi everyone, I'm, I'm Matt Wierbinski. I uh, graduated here in 2013. Uh, I played basketball, baseball, and football here, um, and then I went to college at SUNY Fredonia, graduated there in 2017. I have a, I had a BA in graphic design, and uh, my first job out of college was this small print shop uh, that basically printed uh, designs on clothing. Um, I was there about a year, and then after that, I worked at a small sign shop in Syracuse. Um, I was there about two years, and I learned a lot from both those jobs. And now I'm at uh, Lockheed Martin. It's in Liverpool. It's a government defense contractor. I'm a graphic designer there. I've been there a little over three years. Um, so I'm a graphic designer there, and uh, I work in. Um, I do a lot of graphics for trade shows, a lot of internal identifiers, logos, stuff like that. But my main job responsibility is in proposal graphics. So these. Basically, these big 
large Word documents that I had to create graphics for in, re in replacing those words because no one really wants to look at or read a thousand, a thousand words. Uh, they'd rather look at a picture. So, um, so yeah, that's basically what I do, and uh, I love it there. It's great, and uh, yeah. All right, that's that's that's, it. A, that's okay. everyone. That's so, uh, I mean, I, I, I guess we could kind of open it up to questions. Yeah. It's a good Does variety of, of people. So, um, please don't be shy. This is all for you guys. Go ahead. Can you repeat the question? How do, you, how do we get our first commissions? So for me, um, I started working with friends and family first because those are like your biggest support right away, I feel like. So um, I actually started off, I didn't charge. I would just, because I was still learning. So I um, did like some of my friends' fairs and because I played college basketball, I like knew a lot of people and I would just work with my teammates so I could test the durability and stuff and that was like the best way. So friends and family, I would say. And then sometimes it just falls into place after that. Like for mm -hmm. me, my first, like I really, so I had a camera in my hand since I was really young. I've taken a couple of like mediocre photography classes and done a photography seminar. The majority of what I've done is self-taught and being inspired by other people. And I think, how did they capture that? What angle did they shoot that from? So I take a lot of inspiration from social media and then I say, okay, now I don't want it to be the same because I want to be my own. So you kind of got to get those inspirations. But um, the very first person that paid me to do pictures was for a wedding. I was like, you're crazy. I've never photographed a wedding in my life. And she was like, it's a small wedding. It'll be fine. It'll be great. And I have a $1,000 budget. And I was like, you can't pay me $1,000. I don't know what I'm doing. She's like, you'll be fine. And at that wedding, I booked two more weddings and the same sort of thing. I was like, what is going on? And so I always say like, find something you love to do and figure out how to get paid for it. Your inspiration, the, your love of that creativity will take you further than you think. It's scary to jump off that bridge, but once you do it and you kind of find that confidence, it's fun. And sometimes you give stuff away, right? Like sometimes you gotta play the game a little. So like a lot of you see me here, like I'll be at, at Pepper Alley tomorrow to photograph Pepper Alley. But the reason why, you know, and I don't, I don't get paid to do that, I do it because I love it and because getting to meet you guys, the hope is you're gonna see me on a field and you're gonna wanna buy that print. Or you're gonna know I do senior pictures and you're gonna go, oh, that this is McNeil, like she's fun. I think she would probably rock my senior pictures. So. Sometimes you give away, you, you know, I think as artists, sometimes you give a little bit more than is normal, but it always, kind of, I think, for me, it, it's always kind of come back in tenfold when you're kind of in giving of your time. There's nothing better for your heart. It makes you kind of happy to do those things. Too. What about you, know, you Matt? Yeah, yeah, so I would say- um, He's like, I actually went to school for this. No, I was, I was gonna say that, um, I mean, at, at, at your guys' age, it's not really about the commission. It's about perfecting your skill. And, um, you know, the commission will come. It's, it's, if you perfect your skill, you'll have, you'll have um, you know, offers and opportunities that are, that are, that are paid for. Um, so it's really, if you love doing it, then, you know, just uh, keep working at it and it'll, it'll all fall into place. So that's really, that's my piece of advice. Yeah, I mean, similar, I think you kind of start with friends and family and build build up, you know, a little bit of a portfolio. That's kind of what I did. And I, I've i been thinking about this, this these last few weeks, that, that good old saying, it's not about like what you know, it's about who you know. And I think I was just talking to Liv when we were walk, walking in about just the connections that you make and all it takes is one or two good connections, like someone in the community. Like I know Cassie, she's she supported me in the past and she will sell it for me. So like all I have to do is send her an idea and she'll be the one, you know, to reach out because she knows those those people and that's all it really takes. And I think too, like you guys are so much even probably more social media savvy than us. So a lot of times, you know, like 
will do that sort of thing. Like he'll tag me in something and I'll tag like a dance studio. And then it's like, boom, it's like that 25 or hopefully even more thousands of people get that exposure. So sometimes it's also kind of putting yourself out there, which is sometimes kind of scary, right? Like um, I think sometimes as artists, you question yourself and it's easy to be a little afraid of critiques, but sometimes you put yourself out there, you tag or hashtag the right person. So run a contest, that's another like easy thing. Like, um, you know, I might want a bunch of shares on this one picture. So I might say, I'll give you $50 off your next session if you, you know, if I get 100 shares, you know, um, and that's kind of it too. And then it, it's kind of like a snowball thing. I think commissions kind of happen. And then the hard part is, is when you've got done a bunch of free stuff for family, yeah. the hard part becomes when you decide you need to start charging them. <laughs> that's where it gets hard. <laughs> No, um, I started at OCC, did two years there, went and got, I don't even remember, humanities, liberal arts, something. Then I did the Walt Disney World College program, um, so I got to live in Florida for five months and work at Walt Disney World, and it was amazing, and then I thought, oh, this hospitality restaurant management thing sounds great. And then I was like, hmm, maybe not. And then I took a few classes at University of Central Florida, that was fun, but didn't really, help my paychecks. And then I went to University of North Texas where I decided I was going to be an accountant. No? Lived She's done it all. Lived there for a year and then she moved back home. home. <laughs> Listen, Seriously, I wanted this to is travel. the Cassie it, panel. What are we doing? Up it was there? like, however you could, you know, I wanted to see the world. And I was like, how do I do this and figure out how to get paid for it, right? Um, and then I came back home. I went to University, or I went to SUNY Oswego and thought, Time to settle down, right, and get like a real job. Got a degree in teaching. I taught for six months and said, "On to the next." This does not. <laughs> this does not suit me. I got married, had a kid, and thought I got to figure out how to contribute, and then fell into my first wedding. So no, you don't need to know what you're doing yet. It's, well, you know, I think the hardest part when you switch a job, and now that I'm a mom and I've watched my kids are starting to kind of go through some of these processes, I think the hardest part is feeling like you're letting somebody down, right? So a lot of you will probably feel like your parents are saying, you gotta go to college or you gotta get an education. And sometimes it's hard, right, to, to not be the lawyer or the doctor, right? And I think sometimes too, like in art, it's like one of those things that you, um, you kind of feel it, right? And you don't always get paid well for it. And so it can be scary, right? And I think that's, in my opinion, probably the scariest part. And I get that even more now that I'm a parent because I'm like, no, go to school, get an education, do the job. But the reality of it is, is there's a lot of opportunity out there, especially now because of social media, to, to really change your mind. <laughs> Did I answer your question? I don't remember what it was. What was the question? I don't know. <laughs> That was good. I don't even know if I answered your question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just to something goes around a little bit. Are there any methods y'all have used that really get the creative juices flowing? Like, you know, I'm not sure how else well, that's to put a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I think traveling is like the best way for me to like get inspired. Even if it's like to Rochester or somewhere like not too far, I always feel more inspired after I've traveled. Um, that's just what I've found because creative blocks are real and especially when you're doing the same thing every single day like I'm doing projects that are like bulk orders now so like a hundred pairs of shoes at a time of the same design for companies and it's very hard sometimes to find like creative inspiration after that so I'll go and like when it's nice out I'll go to like the water or like a waterfall a hike something like that nature that always helps me yeah I would say for me I, so every morning what I do is I wake up and uh, so I work from home and uh, so I wake up I log on before I do any work I do a little hand lettering drawing um, and that's just really just something small it takes five ten minutes whatever but uh, it really uh, it helps me just sort of you know get the flow going for the day and um, it's really just something small that, that I do it's sort of a habit where it just sort of 
it's um yeah warm up yeah yeah so so yeah that's that's just a little piece of advice that you know something that you can do so it's really about you know always sort of being um always sort of designing always always working i'm not sure if there's anyone that's interested in graphic design but um yeah i mean just really always just uh just uh just keep working really and uh it's something small but it works so uh matt and i brought a few like little lookbooks we'll just pass them around and you guys can look I just basically got a bunch of logos that I've created over the last like four or five years. Do you guys work together on the outside? Uh, Matt and I have collaborated a little bit here and there. Um, Matt's done yeah. some local stuff. He, I don't know if you know Riley Shackleton. He owns the Barber Shack down in the village of Camillus. Mm -hmm. um, he did up the, the logos and yep. graphics for Barber Shack. Um, yep. and, yeah, Matt and I have known each other for, for a yeah, long time. For a while, so. yeah. I was going to go off your inspiration thing, though. So I think it's several parts, right? So the first thing, social media, it's a wormhole for me. So if I like am looking for, I don't know, sports photography inspiration, I might type in whatever, or I might type in um, poses, senior poses, and then I bookmark tons of ideas, and then I'll go back and kind of research them. Um, but I find. Um, and I know Paul and I have kind of talked about this a little bit. Um, the word no is a fabulous thing. And what I mean by that is like when Liv is talking about that order for 100 sneakers, when you're young and starting the business, and I'm old, I graduated from high school in 93, and I think I finally graduated from college in like 98. Um, but you want every dollar that's coming in, right? So it doesn't matter what the type of job is, you just say yes because you want the paycheck, and then from that paycheck comes an, probably another person who gets to see your stuff. But sometimes it can, in art, I find you can get burned out, like Liv was explaining, right? So you do the same design a hundred times, or you take the same senior picture a hundred times, or you know, trends happen like in photography, and then you get to this point where you're like, oh, I'm, I'm not doing another wedding again because I can't look at one more kissing couple. So you sometimes the word no comes into effect and you have to be okay with like not collecting that paycheck because you don't want that art burnout, right? So like I work a lot in the summertime so I do a lot of seniors and I do a lot of sports stuff. But uh, when I say no, it's generally, or you know I can't or sometimes I'll say I'm already booked. Um, it's generally because I need like kind of that mental stop and I need to find you know that inspiration whether it's through social media or travel or whatever but don't be afraid of a word now. Yeah I agree and I know Liv I was talking again about this with you earlier you know the the ability to kind of pick and choose your projects is the ideal mm -hmm. just like Cassie was saying like when you first kind of start off you'll take on anything but when I was getting like weird random requests for stuff on t-shirts I'm like mm. you know you kind of have to say no just like you said and it's sometimes can be hard but when you get to that point where you can kind of like pick and choose who your clients are and what you're taking on I think that's awesome and and as an artist as a creative I think to be able to do what you want to do is is the ideal so because you're gonna attract the clients that you're gonna want to do stuff for. If you're already enjoying doing that, then those clients who like it also enjoy that. So I think do passion projects first. Um, it's always good, you know, TikTok has trends and stuff to follow trends because they can go viral and you can get a bigger audience. But I would say to start off, do like passion projects, what, you, what makes you happy and you'll attract the clients you want. 
But I, like part of me would stem off that and say, that's key, right? Is to find that inspiration. But if you're looking to make money, maybe um, if like, it sounds like if you're into like portraiture, maybe instead of working on like huge ones, maybe you find a way to make them smaller so they're at a better price point to lure people in. And once you, you know what I mean? Like is that, works every time, right? A sale, right? Like when the sale signs up on the window. So if you can figure out a way, still do that and then sell 10, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can go, these other options are available, then that that could snowball too. So maybe, you know, maybe it's mini pet portraits that you're doing on a five by seven, you know, and then that could evolve into like the whole family portrait with the pet and the whole family. Or prints, then or you could make a print of it and that's even, you can multiply it. Yeah, it's cheaper to mm -hmm. Cheaper price point, yep. You know, or if it ends up being like a family portrait, like mom keeps the original, but the prints that you still make some residual cash on, go to all the siblings or the grandkids or whatever. Good questions. Who else? I'm like into the sneakers. I love watching you guys dance. Yeah. I'm always, into, always. I'm into the sneaker thing. I just think that that is like so cool. So like, so you're doing a hundred pairs of sneakers right now. Are you painting each one individually, or are you in? Do you have a shop now? Like, or are you yeah. in your house with you know in your kitchen painting sneakers? <laughs> like, what's going on? <laughs> Uh, okay, so I actually am at the point where I have my own art studio downtown, and I have my first employee that I hired. So oh, cool. I do have extra hands helping me out, and I'm always looking for interns if people are interested. Oh, nice. So yeah, um, I have somebody helping me, but yeah, we're doing each one individually. It's like an assembly line though, so like you prep them all at the same time, and then each step is like an assembly line, but yeah, it's, it's a lot, and I airbrush too, it's not all hand painting, but... You gotta go follow her on Instagram. Yeah. Well, lace, I, lace by underscore Liz. It, she actually was smart into it's that. In your email, you but guys. on YouTube, I watched I watched some of the the episodes. It's pretty cool. And actually, the girl who I think was, was recording, I did work for. What's her name? Nicole. Yeah, I actually know who that is. She yeah. went to West Hill. Uh -huh. um, but uh, yeah, I just released like a documentary on YouTube on my biggest order. It was like oh, 550 cool. pairs. Holy crap! Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So like, are you on Amazon or? No, I have my own website, lacebyliv.com, okay. and then I'm on like every social media: TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. So I mean, now with uh, the internet the way it is, everyone can have a website, Matt. I don't. You, I mean, or a portfolio of some yeah. some sort. Yeah. The other thing too is that you guys might be wondering is like, what kind of like programs are we using, or what kind of. So like Matt, what kind of design programs are you using? Yeah, so my, the majority of my workload is uh, Illustrator or Photoshop. Um, and so that's, I mean, that's what I went to school for. Is that's like in college, my art courses uh, for graphic design specifically were pretty much every day in, in Illustrator and Photoshop. So um, yeah, that, those are pretty much the two main, two, I'm trying to think of anything else. I mean, InDesign, I sort of work in InDesign now. Um, and I don't know, I think that's... Yeah, I mean, I, pri I primarily yeah. use Adobe Illustrator. Yeah. If you look in the industry, um, I interned a little bit at Reebok. That's all I used was Illustrator, um, and it's a great program. So if you guys are taking classes, look into a vector imaging type uh, like course or 3D, 2D courses, but Adobe Illustrator for me, um, I use that all the time. Um, look into that that and I, I've actually taught people how to use it and it's it's a great program and once you know how to use it it's awesome yeah but there's still there's still so much these, these, these yeah. programs are so powerful yeah. so like there's still so much that I don't even know so I'm still learning some stuff about each program every day so what do you, what do you I use Photoshop and iMovie to edit videos but I do want to like get into Procreate. I know a lot. What do you of art. use for like cutting out? Do you just use like a? I use a, a silhouette, a okay. silhouette cameo to cut stencils. Um, I think that's the only other like program I would use. But yeah, Photoshop. I haven't 
explored Illustrator. I know there's more. There, I mean, curves. it's all point based, so all you're doing is connecting dots to create shapes. Yeah. And then you send them to a plotter or cutter, and all that does is read those dots and cut out. And that's a lot what, what I do. But as what about as a photographer? And for the most part, Photoshop. But there's a bunch of apps out there too. So there's. Pick monkey. There's oh, I don't even know. I have like four thousand. Okay, we're not gonna yeah. talk about four thousand apps. No, here, I'm just but. saying. But there's a ton. Like pick monkey is right here on my main screen. Um, but there's a, there's just a ton of apps out there too, so you can do quick edits on your phone. So like, for example, I did a, a shot on Monday. I was at the Messina Arena doing hockey pictures, but mom was excited to so I grabbed a picture from my phone and edited it in PicMonkey just so she would have something to share right away because she was anxious. So, you know, but there's apps out there. But for the most part, Photoshop. Mm -hmm. PicMonkey is also my favorite. And a lot of times, phone. you know, nowadays with the, your phone, I mean, you can download. You guys have ability and access to all these apps um, and it makes things really easy to, to create. Um, and you can do it in so many ways, but it also makes it challenging because I got a lot of art files that are like these random files and you're like, what is this? Yeah. Where was this created? So it's, it's interesting and challenging, but it also makes it, it easier for you guys to, to create and do things. Mm -hmm. Matt, do you do freelance on top of your job or just your job? Yeah, no, I do freelance as well. I mean, uh, that my portfolio really is pretty much all freelance if I'm not mistaken um, I mean a lot of the stuff at Lockheed is uh, it's classified so it's hard to talk about I guess mm -hmm. but um, yeah freelance I do logos um, uh, like local businesses I did a bunch of those for like logos for, for them um, I also started a, a small Etsy shop it's still sort of in the works but um, it's uh, I make these greeting cards that are uh, that could be turned into um, the shot glasses so it's a little it's interesting but very school yeah. rated yeah i know, I know. Reading cards. not condoning anything but, you can drink water for your parents <laughs> no, 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 i need your information then. all right yeah, yeah for, for adults only. but and i should probably explain what freelance is right because some of you might not know what that is so what that means is that he kind of is able to use his art outside of his normal nine to five job right to have kind of like a side business. So freelancing would be a way to make a little extra cash on the side. So that's what, what he was explaining. Mm -hmm. And a lot of like artists just starting out, like I started off with a standard nine to five job working for a fire sprinkler company and then doing this kicks on the side and really hustling, you know, after that to, to build what it is now. So it doesn't always just like come and sit in your lap. Like you have to really work and connect over a long period of time. You, you had a question? Yeah, more, I'm a career seeker and I can see all these students partaking in this because I look at what your education was. You did some formal education, but honestly what you're sharing with these guys is a lot of stuff you've got to go out and learn on your own. Mm -hmm. And you know, the learning doesn't stop and technology is going to keep evolving and to stay current, whether it's social media. But then I also hear you're all entrepreneurs as well. Mm -hmm. You know, the business side, I'm a business teacher. so it's like, the business side of things, you got to be able to manage whether it's the freelance gigs or networking with people or how you advertise. So you're working on your publicity. So you guys kind of are self-taught, really. I mean, you took what you learned, but you're evolving as you go. And I think that's important because a lot of students have no idea what they want to do after high school. And it's like, you guys are still figuring things. You know, and people are still figuring things out. So this is a wonderful panel to hear. And I think that's the biggest takeaway from what I've learned throughout the years is just networking is key. You never know who knows who. Um, and I've never paid for advertising a day in my life. And I've gotten to where I've gotten by word of mouth and just being reliable, dependent, giving good uh, work. And, you know, once you start growing, you're gonna, your clientele is gonna grow too. So I started with athletes and then I started with the entertainment industry. And then now it's more like corporate. So though when you get to the corporate level, a lot of the CEOs have CEO friends, and that's what I was talking to Paul about earlier. It's just a matter of word of mouth at that point, and they refer their friends, and it's just like a snowball effect. So networking is the biggest takeaway. Like I went to college, I don't necessarily use my degree, but I've learned to network 
by going to college, and that's that's my biggest asset, I would say, at this point. And like negotiate, right? Like, and hopefully some of you already kind of do it, but like when you're in college and I don't know, let's say you're you don't get your homework done, right? Which I'm sure some of you have had that happen, but you need to have a conversation, right, with your teacher about why that didn't happen, and hopefully there's you know a path that might get you to be able to turn that homework in a little late, whether it sacrifices a for a few points or not. But that is something, while I don't use my degree per se, that I learned those types of things, being able to like go to office hours. And I don't, you know, sometimes I think when you're in high school, you don't necessarily take as much advantage of that, but that is one of the major benefits of college is meeting people and really doing that networking and kind of negotiating things like your grades or if you do try out for a sports team, whether it be club or what, same sort of thing, your schedule is going to change and you kind of got to negotiate the dates and those types of things. And that's like being able to like talk to people and look them in the face and shake hands and that. Those are huge, huge things that you would get that benefit by going to some sort of class or college. I would say too that you guys are still young, so I know you're just all over the place, but try to do your research now as opposed to say in college. Um, the biggest thing that I, you know, I've seen, especially with myself going to say RIT, you know, the amount of money you're paying, paying for these schools is just off, off the charts. And the amount of money that you gotta pay back, student loan debt is just crazy. Um, and I finally just paid off my student loans like three, four years ago. And that's like a huge sigh of relief to me. And you wouldn't think that like a life goal is to pay off like student loan debt, but it is. And so just kind of, I, I know everyone's life is a little different, but the more you can kind of like, I guess, be prepared for like life after high school, the better I think, especially like, you don't necessarily have to jump into college right away. And now with all that's out there, as far as the internet, like you're seeing people, you know, as young as you guys that are creating these art accounts online that are huge and they just kind of teach themselves and kind of make their own side hustle without even having, having to go to school type thing, so. Yeah. you just starting out, how do you manage like the cost of materials versus your like like your profit? How do you that's do, a good question. I mean so basically for me it's like I look at, you know, all right, how much does a t shirt cost? Then I look at, you know, what the cost is for materials to go into it. Elaborate on the question a little bit. How do you price things at, like Undersell yourself, undersell yourself, but also not oversell yourself. So I'll just start going back, but yeah. I think like when I first started, and these guys will probably all agree, and like Cassie was saying, like you don't really know, like all right, how much does a shirt cost, and you kind of have to look and like start. When I first started, like I was selling like a custom shirt for like I don't know, 10, 15 bucks. Now I'm selling them for like 50 to 70. Like so, it's just kind of. And you kind of just start and you kind of just see where it goes. But I think you, a lot of times you kind of undersell yourself. Um, and you kind of have to find a medium where like, all right, I'm just new. Like what is fair to be charging? And then I think as you kind of grow, your pricing will grow with that thing. So I'm gonna live on it. Yeah, I would say uh, do your research and like see your competition and like who around you is doing what you're doing and what they're selling it for and then take into account how long you've been doing it and how skilled you are and how much time you put into it because you want to make it worthwhile for yourself too so start like I would start timing myself to see how long it would take me to do shoes break it down by the hour and say okay how much do I want to charge myself per hour and then so I got like mathematical with it I think that's a good way to do it but I would say when you're first starting out just look around you and see what people are charging and then go based off of that because you can't really I think that's the best way to see you won't really overcharge if you know what other people are selling their stuff for it's 
a really hard question. Yeah. It's a great question because of that purpose. Because a lot of times art takes a really long time. Um, and people don't get to see that time, you know, like they don't understand that a portrait or a pair of shoes or how long it takes to edit a gallery for me. You, nobody really understands that. They see this, you get this for this, right? Because you go to the grocery store and you buy your apples and it costs you $4 and you, you get your apples. But they don't understand the time that goes into the process of the apples being bagged or the painting being painted or the amount of money it costs to, you know, buy all your acrylics, right? They don't, nobody, they don't get it and you don't want to justify that when you sit down with a customer and you're like, oh, well, this paint's going to cost me $50 and canvas costs me 25 and my time at $12 an hour, which is what you'll probably charge in the beginning because you always undercut because you're trying to get up there. It's, it's like the number one best question, but she's right, 100% look at your competition and then on top of that experience and that's kind of where the catch comes in because even though your work might be 10 times better than your competition or you might be using better products then your client doesn't always understand that right like and, and that's it is the million dollar question and if i was to go back and go to college again i'd probably like look at business or entrepreneurship or some of those things like that would have taught me how to like keep my receipts and you know remind me to log my miles and yeah. stuff like that but now do I'm taxes like, do taxes like oh. so okay. but those are things that like you don't always yeah. think about when you go to start your business like ooh, you mean i have to pay I taxes i have yeah. to like, pay <laughs> um, oh go ahead That's a good question. So bulk pricing, I do give a discount because it's such a large quantity rather than like a one of one. Um, yeah, so I do price it differently. And that's something that I had to get used to doing as well because a lot of these times, like to get these bulk orders, I have to sell myself to them because they have somebody, the CEO reaches out to their assistant to reach out to a hundred different customizers to figure out who do we want to pick to do this big project for us. So then I have to hop on a Zoom call with them and sell myself and make sure that I'm giving myself a fair price, but them a fair price that it makes sense. So I'll say this, um, and then I'll bring it to Matt. As far as like, if people don't realize like creating every one of these logos, like I, I mean, and Matt will agree, like sitting down, like it takes a long, a long time like I did this edit with like all the westerny senior girls it took me like hours to make that Cassie probably took the photo of <laughs> and people don't really realize the amount of time it takes to sit down and make some of these things um, a lot of people are just like what app is that how do I and that's I think the value of being an artist and hopefully it never goes away with like AI and that type of stuff but I think there's always gonna be that value of actually having a human being doing the, the art. As far as you, Matt, how do you like price when you're creating your art? Like, uh, Well, when I first started, I remember, I, I sort of viewed it as an investment. I would, you know, just, I would make logos for like 20 bucks, you know, nothing, nothing crazy. And people like to, I mean, they don't, for a logo, um, they, they were, they, they like the $20 price. They saw it as a, you know, a cheap price. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, but at that time I was, I was, you know, just starting. So um, I viewed it as an investment, as a learning experience um, rather than just money. Um, but yeah, now, I mean, I know what my logos or my designs are worth. And um, I, I guess I just price them as, uh, as what logos sort of go for now. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, so. That's Which, how much is that? How much do you do? <laughs> well, I mean, because you have graphic designers that are like charging 100 to 200 to 500 to 1,000. I mean, I think it varies on, like yeah. Liv is saying, like your name. If you keep building up your base, the stronger you get, the more people you know, the, the higher I think your price can go. And you kind of, I think I'm always trying to push that limit of how much is someone really willing to pay for like a custom hoodie, you know? Uh, obviously, I'm not trying to 
go and st rob people, but I know how much time it takes. Um, and you just kind of have to know your worth. Yeah, and you're your own brand when you're an entrepreneur. You're the face of your brand, and like you said, like yeah, you have to know your worth. And with the growth, people will come to you for your name. Like there could be other people who are painting shoes, but because they heard I'm a good person or I'm this or I'm that, they might come to me over somebody else. So that's why it's very important to just always make sure you're a good person outside of anything you're doing. You never know who's around, who knows who, and you're. You gotta make sure you brand yourself well. And it's nice too when you do get to that networking spot too, when you know a lot of people. Like sometimes for me, like one of my not strong skill sets in Photoshop is when this person's blinking or their grandfather passed away and it's a wedding picture and they want that grandfather photoshopped into the picture. The amount of time that would take this old lady to do is far more. So I either turn the work down or I call a graphic designer and I say, hey, you're charging $40 for an hour. If this is going to take you an hour, I'll pay you the $40. I'll make my client pay you 50 right? So I get 10 bucks out of the deal. And then the graphic artist gets their money. But know your skill set too, right? So it's okay to not be the best at something, but just call upon another art friend who does it better and have them help you. Exactly. And still make an extra $10 for yourself. <laughs> okay, everyone's job. You have to reach out to them. It's probably a little bit of both, I'd say. Um, like, for example, recently, uh, not everyone knows some of the stuff I can do. And so West Hill, I, I follow like sports teams. So West Hill just won the state title in basketball. I knew someone who knows the team. And I reached out to that person. And I said, hey, look, this is something I can do with some custom shirts. Could you reach out to the team? And she showed them. And now they're getting like 40 or 50 custom shirts. Because just because I reached out to them. So a lot of it's kind of like, I'd say a little bit of both. Like, how much do you really want to push the limit? Are you hungry? Do you, do you want more work? And as an artist, I mean, I'm always looking, looking for more, but I think it's a, a mix of both. Yeah, I would say that too. And when I was starting out, I was strictly reaching out to people. Like, that's all I did. I spent, this was back when Instagram, so I was in college from 2011 to 2015 ish and Instagram was kind of new at the time so you had more access to celebrities right now you can't DM a celebrity because everybody's DMing them and a lot of them they don't they don't run their own accounts so back then I would DM like when I was at Buff State we would have our like celebrities come and perform for Spring Fest it was called a concert so I'd find out who was coming I would message their manager, them, their team, and say, can I do a shoe for this performer? And that's how I really got started in my school is I would make shoes for the people who were performing just because I took the risk to reach out and put myself out there. But I would have to pay for everything. Like I had to provide the shoe, the paint, the art, everything, but it was worthwhile because for that little shout out or that little moment of, oh, so-and-so did these shoes, it was worth it. So. I would say when you're starting out, yeah, don't be scared to reach out to your favorite celebrity or whoever you want to do work for because you never know what could happen. And even now, like like I said, I'll be here tomorrow for pep rally, but I remember the very first pep rally four years ago that I came to, I remember thinking like, I need to reach out to somebody at the school to like, they, they don't let parents, because my kids went to school here, you know, so they don't let parents come, but I was like, but I have a service that I could that would be good for, you know, then you can tell all the other parents no because they have access to my pictures. So it's okay to network, but now, like, I get a text message from teachers that are like, can you come to this event and photograph that? So it, it, it's like one hand washes the other, right? Like, you gotta give a little sometimes to get, but, and sometimes I'm still doing it. Like, you know, I, a lot of people know me now here at West, West Tennessee, but now, other schools I'm starting to, you know, but you don't have to do as much the more you get into it, but. <laughs> yeah, for me, I, I still reach out to, to people or companies and um, I hate seeing a business with a bad logo. So what I'll do is I'll just, if I, if I see a business with a bad logo, I would, I'll call them up and just sort of just ask if I'm, if I'm, uh, or if they're interested in, in, a, in a new logo and that's really, that's all it takes, just one phone call. So um, that's that's really what what I would do.
to reach out. So. And I think once again, going back to it's about kind of who you know. And so you kind of first start, like, and you kind of give a little, but to, to get more. And then once you kind of like get established, then I think you'll start to see more work coming in. But as an artist, I think we'll all agree, we're all, you're always looking for more and you're always looking for that next fun project. So, I mean, I've, and you really can't, you can't, you can't always just be waiting for that phone call to ring, you know, that phone to ring. How was that, yeah, how was rejection? How does that feel? Oh, it's so bad. Does but I mean, it, it just, it makes me, it drives me even more. Like, okay. you know, I think rejection is part of life. Like it happens. Um, and you kind of have to just say, all right, on to the next and keep moving on and keep finding that next project that's going to come in or that person who's willing it. to yeah, yeah. give you a shot. Yeah, like I think with all things, you can let it burn you or you can let it drive you. So you just have to approach like any sort of rejection like that, you know, and say, okay, I'll get on the next time. Um, but it happened, you, you have somebody that asks for a refund or, and you're like, whoa, and wait, what? You know, it's not fun and it happens, but um, you just gotta find a way to let it drive you instead of burn you. Rejection is redirection. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Oh, I'm going to put that on a shirt and sell it. <laughs> Copyright, place by live. Yeah, <laughs> She's already trying to get money out. Uh, I love it. I get 10% royalties. So. You guys are All right. Any other questions? We should um, probably end it soon or now. <laughs> She's had it. Guys, any, uh, any other words of wisdom? Just follow your dreams, as cliche as that sounds. Nothing is impossible. Seriously. Putting that on a shirt, too. Yeah. I'm 5%. 10% of the dreams. Everybody's busy tonight. I'm just joking. So, no, but seriously, follow your dreams. With social media and everything, you can do so much. The possibilities are really endless. Put that on a shirt, too. Um, I got a whole line now. No, but yeah, just if, you have, if you're passionate about anything, just stick with it and you can make it happen. And I think the nice thing, I think with maybe the exception of Matt, who has a pretty normal nine to five job, but I like get to set my own hours, right? So like I'm going on vacation right now for 10 days. I'm not taking any pictures. Like it's kind of cool when you have your own business and you know, I'll still be fielding phone calls or emails and those types of things, which, but it's kind of cool to, to be able to have your own business and to say yes to the things you want and say no to the things you don't, but also to set your own kind of timeline, right? Because you want to paint at midnight until four in the morning, you can. But you don't have to clock in at necessarily at nine o'clock until five with a lot of our jobs. I think so now cool. nowadays, like like you're saying, like people are on their phones, devices. I'm working to like, you know, 24 seven. But you know what? I can but it's also freedom, freedom with like a phone and device. Like I could still answer messages, but be, you know, out somewhere on a hike or being with some of my friends. Like now it's, for me, it's, I think the way things are, it's freedom. Like you are granted the access now with everyone, like with the internet, just the ability to go where you want and do what you want type thing, as long as you're getting the work done and doing good. Yeah, find something cool. you love to do and figure out how to get paid to do it. That's really what yeah. it comes down to. Yeah, yeah really just always be creating too. and um, Yeah, just whatever you love to do, just, just keep creating that, that sort of thing. And um, don't be worried that you don't have it figured out right now. I still don't have it figured out, you know, fully. So, um, you know, you guys have so much time ahead of you and, uh, you know, just, just if you find someone that's that's uh, a level above you, then just then learn from them. Don't don't look at them as like an enemy or anything. Just, you know, take what they have and, you know, just learn from them. And, you know, it's not a competition. It's really just, uh, we're, all, we're all trying to be better, so. Does anyone want custom shoes made by her? <laughs> I think I oh, we got one. <laughs> uh, I get how much? Do, how much percentage? Do I get? <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, though, I think everyone, if um, follow up on social media, um, definitely. Um, I, I'll, I'm recording this, so I'll put it up on my YouTube. Shameless plug, but you know that type of thing. I'm trying to push my YouTube. I'm almost at 500 subs, so you know. But uh, <laughs> but. 
Yeah, thanks guys for uh, coming in. And Thank you. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to reach out or you know come up and, and talk. But uh, I think that's another thing too is always just be learning. Just be learning. Educate yourself, and we're still learning. So ask questions and don't feel don't don't be afraid to come up and ask. So. Thank you. Thank you. And Thank say you. hi to me tomorrow. I'll be here. I want to know when Cassie's going to go to her next college. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'll take some more classes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matt. We're about how to go for you. <laughs>